Tired of wasting time on tedious code reviews, tracking tiny bugs, or wrestling with inconsistent code styles? I was too, until I started using my top 3 MCP servers. In fact, right now I can't imagine working without them. The first one, it's all about boosting your copilot sequential thinking skills. I will show you exactly how I use it in my workflow. And as a bonus, I've got one that's a game changer for anyone building with SHA-C and UI. But here is the thing, it's not just about setting up servers. I will show you two crucial configuration tips almost nobody talks about, so you can get way more value than just the defaults. Let's dive in and transform the way you work with code. Let's start with the first one. So first one is pretty common, I guess, sequential thinking. And this gives your copilot agent few improvements. I mean, reasoning is really improved because how this works, basically. Uh, copilot agent can branch out with thinking uh, so he can, you know, create a few ideas, few thoughts on some topic and then come back to that. And since I added this as a tool to my projects, Copilot Agent use, use it almost constantly and it really greatly improved the responses. This branching out of the ideas is probably one of the best features and you know, believe me, GitHub Copilot knows how to use it. And the best thing is that you can use it in the every project because this is completely MIT and in my opinion, pretty safe uh, to use. Here is the page. We can open it to see how does it look like. Uh, like it's part of the model context protocol uh, slash servers. This is the repository. Um, and here we have sequential thinking MCP server. You have the features, the tools and stuff. You will find links in the description of the video so you can jump right away into it. I will show you the configuration right in a second. Uh, let's go to the second one. Second one is memory. And this memory MCP is to me really great also, especially though uh, because it runs completely locally uh, because it uses um, JSON file, memory JSON file, uh, and it saves entities and relations between them. Uh, you know, it won't put the whole context of the, I don't know, summary of the uh, conversation or the current chat, but it will put entities and relations like, you know, um, what happened here, what happened there, if you use some important tools, or if you work with other uh, MCP servers, it can remember some important things so that, you know, he won't come back to call some tools just to get an idea of something, but it will be stored in the memory. So this is really great. Uh, but there is important catch in this. You should configure this memory file per project. By default, it's created, I don't remember where, but uh, somewhere uh, in one place there is one uh, memory JSON file by default uh, but you will be asked for the path to this when you will start using uh, this MCP server but it can be trapped because if you want point file if you want point out the file in like per repository then a few of your projects may use the same memory file so beware of that and I will show you in a minute how to best uh, configure that because I have that already in one of my repositories link will be also in the description and this is the best way to configure that and also this way other people other teammates from your team can use the same thing and you can also use it in every project in my opinion because it's everything happens locally the third one is context seven and this one believe me it's also amazing oh this one is also in the model context protocol servers repository so you will find it there link will be in the description context seven is the entire different thing uh, it's built by one of the companies 
so it's unfortunately free for personal use. So I use that for open source uh, stuff. Uh, and for that, it's great. You have the whole library of, you know, different uh, tools like React, let's say, and you will see that we have React and many, many different things that are connected with that. And it serves you uh, or your copilot agent documentation and code examples, because what people in Contact 7 did, uh, if you report your library to them, they will, uh, they have AI stuff, that, uh, AI agent that creates code examples of great quality and stuff like that. And then it's served to your MCP server. So, you know, you can be really up to date and you see when the updates are done one month ago, three months, one week, three days ago, stuff like this. So believe me, if you are working with Copilot, Cursor or anything cloud code, you know that context is the king and it's crucial. You need it if you want great code quality. Uh, yeah, so it has docs for tools, libs, frameworks, languages, all of that basically. And this is also great. For all my open source projects I take part in, I use Context 7 because it's so good. And as far as I know, you can't buy it yet. Like, I mean, the access for the commercial projects, but probably they will start doing that soon. Or someone will start an open source project like this one. Actually, I thought about it, but maybe not yet. Uh, the bonus one is the Shad CN UI MCP server uh, written by Jay Pishnice something like that. I don't know, probably I can, I uh, spell that wrong, uh, but here it is. Here is the profile of Jay. Uh, and I also, also, I'm one of the contributors because I fixed a few uh, small things, but I plan to maybe uh, contribute a little bit more to this MCP server. And this one, believe me, this is so great. I mean, uh, it integrates with um, ShadCN Git repository. So you have always, always current version or and current state of the components that are proposed by the ShadCN UI. And believe me, this is just amazing. This MCP server, if you work with ShadCN UI, works way better, gives way better results, in my opinion, than Context 7 for Shad CNUI. And my God, this is just amazing. You have just to try this out. Uh, if you want to use it in a project, best part, you can use it everywhere because it's MIT and you know, it's using public repository of Shad CNUI. Uh, as I remember, you don't send any code there you just ask for uh, components and you got code examples. And the best way, it also checks uh, how the components should be structured. So you have really nice examples and your code looks really beautiful. Um, you have to get GitHub API token uh, if you want to have more, um, more requests because as I said, it makes requests uh, to the GitHub Shad CN UI repository using GitHub API. So you have uh, to use API token for that if you want, you know, to have availability to use like, I know, 5,000 5, uh, requests per minute, because in other case, you will have limitation like 60 uh, API requests per hour or oh, per hour. Sorry. So we definitely want to have it. Uh, but here is great instruction by Jay Pisnice how to get your GitHub token uh, in two minutes. Uh, and it's really nice instruction, I mean. Yeah, so those are my servers. And let's see uh, now how I prepared them. Like here, I asked because I recently recorded video on um, vibe, co vibe coding in this repository, TikTok frontend. If you want, link is in the description and probably visible somewhere in here. Highly recommend though, really nice video uh, with live vibe coding session <laughs> with GitHub Copilot and explanation of few important things and how I use GitHub Copilot. So I strongly encourage you to go there and check that. Uh, but here I asked Copilot 
to uh, add some things to the memory. So let's check this out. Uh, here we have mcpjson configuration, but I said to you that we will go to the memory. So let's open memory JSON, and here you can see um, this those data. Like we have type entity, we have relations, and we have from where. Uh, time lock input interface, data handling critical issue, MSW integration, React 19 implementation. You can see we have really nice data storage with lots of information, observations, and stuff like this. We have, as example, information about architecture, component architecture. Really nice. And what do we have here? Real-time GRID highlighting, blah, blah, blah. Oh, so there is a lots of observations here. And as you can see, they are pretty short, but I see clearly in quality of responses of my copilot agent that this greatly improves and helps a lot. But I will show you the configuration file. So it's mcpjson, it's in .vs code. Uh, directory right here and I will commit this uh, to my repository because I believe it's really worth doing so. Uh, you should share things like this with your team because then you know it's just bang. You get do git clone, you run npm run or anything else that you do uh, that you use to start the repository to work uh, in the de development environment and you have everything set up perfectly. Uh, so like here, we have servers section with memory. You can see how does it look like. And this is this important part that I said to you, memory file path. Uh, and I did it very neatly, thanks to GitHub Copilot, of course, uh, because we have here this, I don't know, variable, let's say, which is available for GitHub Copilot uh, backend engine, I guess, workspace folder. Thanks to that, you can commit this file to other people and they will be able to use the same configuration as you in their local project, which is great. As, as you can see, we have highlight, which is my workspace uh, folder right now, and reference to the MCP memory JSON, which is not, uh, memory JSON is not committed to the Git. I need to add it to the Git ignore right now, uh, but I have committed memory JSON dist which, you know, if you set up the uh, the new repository, I mean new project, you should just copy this memory JSON disk into memory JSON, and then it will be ready to go, which is great. And we separate those um, memory files, as I said uh, previously. Then sequential thinking, it's straightforward, very straightforward. Context 7 also, Shad CNUI. Here you have this GitHub API key. And this is interesting because I set here the env uh, and I use input variable, GitHub API key. And to use input like this, you have to add section inputs here. And why this is great, and you should do it always like this, uh, because this way Visual Studio Code will store uh, securely your API keys and, you know, div basically API keys slash tokens, they will be stored like this. So they won't be committed or anything else. And you know, this is really annoying when you have a file which is committed to Git and you need to constantly uh, override it. And then you can accidentally commit that. You should avoid something like this at all cost. So here we have that problem completely solved. Uh, and right now you can you can uh, use those buttons here like th those are like text but those are buttons and you can start stop server and stuff like that uh, stuff like this like you can see here oh i don't know why sequential thinking stopped i can start it i can start context 7 and we have shad cnui which is uh, which was running but is not so we will run this and now you can see, let me uh, enable this input. Uh, and here we have tools. 
when you click this, you will see what your GitHub agent uh, has available by you right now. And you can see here MCP server, context 7, memory, sequential thinking, SHAT, CN, UI. So he has access to all those tools and can reference them whenever needed. If you will see that your GitHub agent doesn't use them, you can say to him this, like, hey, please use your tools like MCP servers. You will hit enter and he will, you know, go and find available tools and he will use them. You can even reference them by name. Thanks to that, I can achieve really good code quality in my project. And, you know, you don't have to be afraid that, oh my God, I'm using GitHub Copilot and it will create crappy code or something like that. No, it can create really nice code. Now you've seen the MCP servers that power up my workflow and some of the config secrets that make them really shine. But here's the reality. Even the best servers won't catch everything and they can't fix your code by themselves. The real difference? It comes from having the right copilot instructions files tailored to your project and your style. That's where you'll see the biggest leap in code quality and consistency. So stick with me and check out the next video where I'll show you exactly how to build Copilot instructions that actually move the needle for your code base.